The A380 will be built from a giant kit of parts made mainly in Spain, France, the UK and Germany. And each country has had to invest heavily in new facilities. Other parts will come from more than a dozen other countries. So the plane is truly a global effort. It's big, it's really big. You name it and the people are working on it. So at the end of the day it's almost impossible to count the number of people working on this project. The biggest single development is near Airbus headquarters in Toulouse. The final assembly line is where the various components of the plane will be joined together. Work began in 2001 on a complex that would cost 240 million pounds on its own. A third of a mile long, it covers 24 acres, big enough to hold eight planes at once. The huge cost of this program means Airbus have to sell 250 planes just to break even. And to help the drive for early sales is a nearby showroom. Inside is a full-size demonstrator of the new machine. Getting customers to spend a lot of money on a plane that is yet to fly is quite a challenge. But Chief Commercial Officer John Leahy is full of confidence. Why would you want to spend $265 million for something like this? Because it'll do something no other airplane in the world can do. And that's bring people 8,000 nautical miles and a level of comfort that's never been provided before. Although this interior is just a fantasy, an exercise in design possibilities, it is still a salesman's dream. How often do you see this? <laughs> well, yes, it's an extra large loo, but it's also a shower. And this is something that you don't see in an airplane, and maybe you should. The mock-up is designed to whet the appetite of customers such as Sir Richard Branson, head of Virgin Atlantic. He's agreed to buy six planes, based on the promise that the A380 will set new standards for performance and efficiency. There are a lot of challenges when you're building a, a brand new aeroplane. Um, but, you know, Airbus are a very, very professional company. And, you know, we would not be buying planes from Airbus if we didn't feel that we could trust them to deliver. The plan is to build four prototype aircraft and then move seamlessly into full-scale production. If all goes to schedule, the aircraft should be in service by 2006. The first piece of metal is cut in January 2002 and shortly afterwards huge components are being produced in the brand new factories all over Europe. In Germany large sections of the fuselage rapidly take shape put together using high-tech materials and thousands of rivets. In France the carbon fibre centre wing box the structural heart of the aircraft comes together. In the UK, in Broughton, North Wales, the wings themselves are assembled. Built up from hundreds of components, each one is constructed standing on its rear edge. It looks more like the hull of a ship than part of a plane. By November 2003, the first wing is ready to be hoisted out of its supporting jig. And engineer Simon Shingler and his team will get their first sight of the giant part. The whole idea of having you all here is to make sure that you're all concentrating on your one specific station. Right? And that's how we're going to ensure that we're going to take this wing out without anyone hurting themselves or without the components getting damaged. When we're lifting this wing out, make sure all the, all the mobile phones are turned off. <laughs> right. Despite the laughter, this is a serious business. The wing weighs over 30 tons, and to damage it now would be disastrous. Everybody gets very excited, and it's easy to, uh, to sort of leave one of the attachments in place, or part of the tooling, because there's so many attachments around the periphery of the wing. If that happens, then it's, uh, it causes damage when it's being lifted. Alan Ferguson is in charge of the first stage. 
attaching the hoist to the solid titanium lifting points. What we're doing is we're making sure we get the crane correctly aligned with the lifting attachment so as when we make the initial lift we don't get any sway on the wing. So it's, it's critical, yeah. We're ready to go. We want everyone in place now, and then we it's like we're going for it now completely. All right, gather round, please, gents. The operations team and the crane driver is going to take some weight. We're going to release the front spar, and then we're going to remove the wing. Try to stay calm. Don't panic. We'll do everything nice and slowly. There's no rush now. But we, once we start, we're not stopping. Thanks very much. Okay. Steady now. All right, you clear, take it off. Right. Get that spar support out, please, is it down? Right. Yeah. With one small movement, the wing is free. Clear, I think we're empty, clear. Yeah. Now it can be lifted out and into the next hall. Don't forget the outboard end. The wing may look big now, but once the rest of the parts are fitted, it will grow by half as much again. The true size of the A380 is starting to show. I think the whole world's going to uh, look on in awe the day it flies. I think the Boeing aircraft company have got something to uh, be very wary of. But even while the major components are being built, detailed design of the interior and many other parts is far from finished. Charles Champion and his team of senior executives meet once a fortnight in Toulouse to try and keep the project on course. With so much happening at once, there is a real danger of becoming overloaded. Can we start? It's a question of time management, because uh, not only time management within at, at, at work, but also uh, time management with your personal life. And you can burn out. Huh? Basically, if you're not careful, you just can burn out, and uh, at the end of the day, uh, you're, you're, you're out. Andreas Fering has been brought in to replace the previous head of interior engineering. For him, it's particularly tough because he's taking over a department that is already three months behind schedule and over budget. Team and myself, we are under enormous pressure because we have to keep the timeline and we are late. We have to keep the budget line and uh, we have a major difficulty to do so. Even at this stage, Andreas and his staff are suffering from the punishing schedule. People are exhausted already. And uh, sometimes they are a little bit, uh, let's say, overstressed and the reaction is overstressed as well. Because um, if you then have a, a very, very quick requirement coming in, you have to do this, you have to, to speed up, and so on. They do not understand because they are working like hell already. Andreas and his team work from this unmarked warehouse near Hamburg in Germany. In private, this is where Airbus and the airlines can agree exactly on the interior design of the plane. Each airline wants a customised interior, so Andreas has to engineer dozens of unique features to keep them all happy. You can change the lighting area over here. You can have green light, you can have blue light. 
Then there's the task of turning the sales department's dreams in the mock-up into lose of showers and the like into reality. We will have showers on our aircraft, but not in a way like they are displayed at 